It's been a little over a year since I got this refurbished 14 inch MacBook Pro and here's why you should consider getting yourself a refurbished MacBook as well. With rumors of the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips already rife in the Apple ecosystem, the temptation to jump on the latest and greatest bandwagon is very alluring. But what if I told you you'd be getting an equally powerful and efficient computer if you got a refurbished one? Buckle up and let's go for the ride. First and foremost, let's address the elephant in the room. So, who would the M1 14 inch MacBook Pro suit the best? When Apple unveiled the new M1 chip late 2020, it was an environment modifier in the world of computers. And if you'd ask me, the tech used in these laptops has done an impressive job at future proofing them for the foreseeable future. Speaking of its tech, it would be a delight for all sorts of professionals. If you're a content creator like me, this absolutely tears through timelines like a hot knife through butter. Coders are also not left behind. When you're deeply locked in your programming sessions, using the M1 MacBook Pro would be an absolute breeze. For the average consumer, this would be a bit of an overkill, but then again, you wouldn't be disappointed in catching your latest movies on Netflix or just completing normal computing tasks like filling Excel sheets, tapping up Word documents, or browsing the internet. All in all, the ideal laptop for a budding professional, and in my opinion, the best for creatives out there. Before we jump into its performance, here's its impressive spec sheet. I know majority of you are most excited about how well it's been performing. Having made the jump from an Intel-based MacBook, there's clear daylight between my 13-inch MacBook Pro and my refurbished M1 14-inch MacBook Pro. When it comes to performance, my 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro compared to the Intel-based 13-inch MacBook Pro, my 14-inch has speeds that are up to 3.7 times faster in terms of CPU performance. So, whether it's a super graphic intense timeline on Premiere Pro or a massive panorama on Lightroom Classic, the refurbished 14-inch MacBook Pro absolutely tears it to shreds and it goes even farther. The unified memory architecture has enabled me cut through workflows that I previously thought were unimaginable on a laptop. When it comes to storage, the super fast SSDs have been giving me a jaw dropping 7.4 gigabytes of read speeds, which is more than twice the speed of the previous gen SSDs, and that has enabled me cut across timelines faster and transfer footage insanely quick without any hiccups. I bet you any video editor will tell you there's no better feeling than that. While on the subject of performance, we might as well talk about how it's been faring when it comes to ports. Even though the inclusion of three USB-C ports, an audio jack port, a HDMI port and a micro SD port was received with much aplomb, there's always the need for more. The read speeds have been impressive and I haven't experienced any issues using the ports on my MacBook. On the flip side, despite the addition of extra ports compared with the previous gen MacBooks, I always find myself using dongles. Anchor being one of my favorites and on the rare occasions when I use it in clamshell mode, my Cal Digi TS3 Plus, literally a dongle on steroids, comes in clutch thanks to its versatility. Moving on to the camera and display, it continues to add to the amazing experience and I've enjoyed using it over the last couple of months. Starting with the camera, its 1080p camera has been an absolute delight to use whether on Zoom meetings with some of my editors or just first time with my mates. As for the display, ProMotion has been nice when sifting through the web pages and I like how the refresh rate drops down from an impressive 120Hz when the screen is static in order to preserve battery life. The fact that it also supports 1 billion colors has enabled me create ultra smooth gratings and in addition to that, its liquid retina XDR display has enabled users like me create, edit and review HDR content with needle-like precision. Instead of the earth backlight has thousands of mini LEDs arranged in individually controlled local dimming zones which has enabled me experience up to 1000 nits of sustained brightness, 1600 nits of peak brightness and a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. All that simply summarized as extreme dynamic range which brings HDR content to life with unbelievable detail. 
I would be doing you guys a disservice if I don't talk about consuming content on this display. The mini LED technology has not only come in clutch when deeply immersed in my editing sessions, but also when watching movies in the dark, owing to the fact that I haven't been able to experience the dark grey areas around the content I'm consuming. To put it simply, the pixels in those areas are not lit, which makes the whole viewing experience unobtrusive. Compared with the LCD screens of old, the contrast is much better and I've been enjoying the inky blacks. The highlights absolutely pop thanks to its ability to get up to 1600 nits of peak brightness like mentioned earlier. Moving down, I've enjoyed using this keyboard to edit my videos, scripts and just for simple computing tasks like pausing videos on YouTube. The black anodized aluminum inset looks impressive, but the fact that it's matte black makes it the ultimate dust and fingerprint magnet. Being a membrane keyboard, the key travel isn't that significant and the keys also need to bottom out for them to be registered. In terms of haptic feedback, the key travel isn't as satisfying as that of a mechanical keyboard, but nonetheless, it does all I need of it. Speaking of mechanical keyboards, if you haven't watched my review of the rarest mechanical keyboard in the world, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box. Moving further down, the expansive force trackpad has been a delight to use when I don't have it paired with my MX Master 3, be it scrolling through my scripts, switching tabs on Google Chrome or just closing windows on my desktop, it's been super responsive, not to mention so oddly satisfying. I mean, just listen to this. And while on the subject of satisfaction, the sound quality coming out of these speakers is just that. Have a listen to this. Audio recordings are also impressive, especially coming from a laptop. I recorded that on my laptop and even though it's not as clear as that of my Blue Yeti, when Apple announced they would be coming with studio quality mics that allow up to 60% lower noise score for crystal clear recordings which even captured the subtlest of sounds, they truly meant it. When it comes to the speakers, I've finally had first-hand experience with three-dimensional sound stage after listening to lots of music and movie conversations on this laptop and that has been made possible thanks to support for special audio. As you'd probably know, you can't mention refurbished without talking about the price. At the time of purchase, this particular refurbished 14-inch MacBook Pro with a 10-core CPU, 16-core GPU, 16 gigs of unified memory, and 1TB SSD storage went for $3,369 Australian dollars, which is roughly $2,399 American dollars. A brand new 14-inch MacBook Pro with the same specs went for $3,749 Australian dollars, which is about $2,669 American dollars. Even then, you'd still be saving about $300 American dollars, which if you'd ask me, is still a good bargain considering the fact that you're pretty much getting the same laptop minus the refurbished tag. With Black Friday sales still lingering, you could get a refurbished 14-inch MacBook Pro best model for about $2,769 Australian dollars, which is roughly $1,850 American dollars. If you are interested in grabbing one, I'll leave links of the laptop options plus everything you see in this video in the description box. Thank me later. When it comes to portability, it's quite easy to carry around and even though its new design appears more robust and chunkier than the previous gen, being able to use it practically anywhere has been a life hack, more so for a content creator like myself. I've been able to edit my videos while enjoying coffee at a restaurant and also performing mundane tasks like responding to emails and messages pretty much anywhere. The beauty of this refurbished M1 14-inch MacBook Pro is that despite being extremely powerful, it's also been remarkably power efficient and over the past year or so, I've benefited from its super fast performance whether I'm plugged in or not. Its battery life is definitely something to write home about whether I'm out shooting content and editing on the go or just casually using it in the house. Experiencing up to 17 hours of video playback and its fast charging have been some of the highlights when it comes to battery life. In conclusion, for the first time I can say, Apple have made a machine that is next level. Whether it can keep up with the ever-changing landscape, more so for creators, remains to be a question of time. If you've been sitting on the fence debating whether to wait for the M2 Pro or M2 Max, 
I'd suggest you give this a shot since if Apple's history is anything to go by, improvements on those new chips wouldn't be that significant but they'll definitely be a price hike. In that case, the best option would be to go for a cheaper alternative for almost the same performance output. If you've got to this point of the video, leave a thumbs up in the comment section and don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Check out this video on my YouTube setup tour to see how I utilize this laptop's full potential to create amazing YouTube videos for you guys. People of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.